Morning. Thursday morning. First up, everybody's still asleep. So, no kid with me this morning. after 7 a.m. So I'm not going to disturb anybody. Let them get some kit. We'll go the other direction this morning. So we actually walked here the other day. When we went uh, hiking on the first day, we went up this uh, hill. In the, in the background, which was very nice. And the Heron Hound, which is where we had a pint of uh, whatever it was, I think it was Coors. trail in the background which um, goes up the hill at the back. I wouldn't quite call it a mountain but something my engine has taken a hammering in the last three days this car is nearly 20 years old next year it'll be 20 but um, generally speaking it does a good job for a car of that age it's actually in really good condition it has its problems like any car of that age would have Beautiful, absolutely stunning scenery here. Spenhouse Farm. Just awesome. This beautiful, sprawling, English countryside. Some of the people in the comments have called it God's own country, and I can see why. This 
extend to the other beautiful parts of the world, but we're in one of them right now. Let's get a pipe on. This morning I have my 626. I haven't smoked it yet out here. And a beautiful black green Cumberland stem and the same band. LCS wave on the stem. I haven't done one of those in ages. I really, really have to do one soon. Somebody else mentioned about that. The LCS wave. I was in touch with the trucking piper Bob. And we were talking about um, maybe doing a bit of a UK pipe meetup. And I think that's uh, something I have mentioned to other people as well. So I think there is definitely a, um, a need for that, a want for that. So I think I'm going to try and uh, do something about that. I mean, there will be a gathering in the not too distant future in the UK pipe show, uh, the Nottingham pipe show which um, is something I've been to a few times. Um, if you want to have a look at my back catalogue, just search Nottingham Pipe Show. I think I've got a video, quite a lengthy videos in 2018 and 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you should get a good feel um, for what the shows are about, especially if you haven't been before. much. It's always helpful to have a lighter that doesn't work. This is my absolutely backup emergency piper. Emergency lighter. I've usually got two or three lighters down there in my glove box. But I think my son took one the other day. The other one now has run out and I didn't bring the, the Zippo with me. The Nottingham Pipe Show is very, very enjoyable. It's very nice. It's in a lovely venue. Um, it's in the, the venue of, uh, I forget the name of it, the, of a pub, which is on the canal. I think it's called the Boathouse, possibly. And the pub actually straddles the canal, um, kind of. Um, when you walk through, when you come in, you come into um, like a, a side entrance kind of thing. And the beer garden is kind of on the, you sort of walk down the left hand side. Um, and then there's a doorway on the right where you can go up and into the bar um, but to go up um, I think when you go into the bar you have to cross over um, I don't know if it's the actual canal or just a side sort of um, archery um, of the canal um, but there's definitely boats there and stuff like that um, which is very cool when I saw it the first time I was quite uh, taken aback by it And the show is upstairs on the first floor. And uh, the times that I've been, there's been a good selection of pipe makers. Okay, it's not on, on, U on US scale. You know, when you've got maybe a hundred tables or something at some of the shows. Here in the UK pipe show, there's probably um, something like... Uh, maybe 10 tables. Maybe this year there'll be more because there's quite a few more UK pipe makers who I think will be attending. It's always a bit of a, um, a toss up for me 
Um, I haven't yet attended as a pipe maker. I've only attended um, as a as an attendee. You know, joining the show, enjoying the show. Um, in 2019, I had I was kind of only like a year or so into pipe making. I, I wasn't anywhere near ready showing pipes. Last year, I had a very very strong will to go as a pipe maker but my diary had other ideas and I couldn't make it. This year I'm booked in to go, uh, booked in to go as a pipe maker to have a table but it's a bit of a double-edged sword because if you do that you kind of can't really enjoy the show unless you go with somebody who's going to man your table. Um, and, and I kind of had the same problem in the years that I went because I've done, you know, pretty extensive videos of the show. And so I was busy taking video clips most of the time and I only had a short amount of time to sit down and enjoy a pipe with friends. Uh, so going as a pipe maker is kind of the same thing. You, you're busy on the, on the show floor and not outside with everybody else enjoying uh, a pipe and a chinwag. There's something like 20 or 30 tables outside where everybody congregates, sits down, and um, there's a lot of table swapping, table hopping going on, where you know you have a, a bit of a chat with some guys and then you meet up some other guys, and it's really good fun. And you can go into the bar and get whatever kind of beverage you want. It's a very enjoyable day. It's on a Sunday. I think entry is usually around 11 o'clock. And it goes on for a few hours. And it's good fun. If you, uh, It's in uh, Nottingham, as I say, so from London. To drive up, it's a couple of hours. I haven't decided yet if I'll drive up or go up by train. Anyway, coming back to my original point, which um, I was communicating with Bob, I think besides for the Nottingham Pipe Show, it would be nice to do a UK meetup somewhere, so UK pipe uh, enthusiasts. since the, uh, the demise of meetups at uh, JJ Fox. Oops, sorry, I haven't repositioned you. I mean, JJ Fox used to be the venue for the Pipe Club of London, and sadly that's no more. So the Pipe Club of London does meet up in, uh, I think it's the Overdraft, I think it's called, um, on one of the Saturdays in every month. I forget which one. Which I can't get to. Um, but every so often there, there is an unofficial meet up at JJ Fox. Well, I say every so often, it's happened once as far as I know. Um, and I was talking to, to Bernard, the president of the club, about doing another one soon, so perhaps that will happen. Bernard's actually, he's actually got a, a couple of podcasts where he's been interviewed. Um, I 
I think he's been interviewed by um, by the Pipe magazine. Um, it's a worthwhile listen. He, he's, I would say that Bernard is probably one of the most travelled um, and accomplished pipe men that I know. I mean, there are plenty others out there, but I mean, in the Pipe Club itself, in the Pipe Club of London, there are, as I say, some of the most accomplished pipe men there. But in terms of being travelled, I think Bernard has to be one of the best, one of the, the most travelled. Um, he's been to shows all over the world, pipe shows, and slow smoke competitions all over the world. And he has one of the most amazing pipe collections, I would say, in the world. Um, as I understand it, he's got several thousand pipes. And uh, we've spoken many many times of me going over there and, and maybe doing a little chat with him on a video and um, that time will come soon that time will come soon he's been very kind and organized for me a pipe which well I hope it's organized he's in the process of it but I um, one of my first years as a member of the club so each year the club pipe comes out I've ordered the pipe and um, one year I even ordered two um, but in the first couple of years, they were non-filtered pipes. And I think it was the first year after I discovered smoking a pipe with a filter, possibly 2017 maybe, possibly 2019, I forget. One of the first years anyway. Um, no, I think 2017 or 2018 is the Sayakapo, which I still have which isn't filtered. Um, in actual fact, it's such a beautiful pipe that I keep thinking of, you know, I'm gonna convert that pipe one day to nine mil. All of the other cl uh, club pipes that were non-filtered, I've sold on. Um, Cause I'm not smoking them and for whatever reason decided that I wasn't gonna convert them. And since 2018, I've, I think I've only had, I've always ordered the filtered versions. And uh, John, Green, who's the uh, chairman of the club, indefatigable chairman of the club, does a lot of work behind the scenes, together with Bernard and others on the committee, to really make the the club a, a distinguished a distinguished club. But not only that, but to really get us fantastic pipes every year, really, really great pipes each year. Down me this, I'm not being down this road. My brain isn't quite in gear yet, so I've only just woken up, so forgive me if I talk a bit of gibberish. Oh, hello. I went past without saying hello. How are you? I just drove past without saying hello. You came to me to say hello, didn't you? Are you having a good morning? Oh, they're all coming to say hello now. Hello ladies, did we have a good night? We're coming to see who's there. All right, don't argue. How are we? You're some handsome looking cows, I will say that. Yeah. Let's hope no cars come up behind us while I'm talking to you. You're all very well behaved, I'll give you that. You be nice to each other. Look at this. I'm sure you enjoy having somebody chat to you very nicely. 601423, how are you today? Oops, I've got a car. Sorry, guys. All right, guys. Sorry, gals. 0460, how are you?
Look at that beautiful pasture behind them. Right, ladies, I'll be seeing you. I hope I don't see you on a plate too soon. I hope you have a good life. Have a good day. Bye. Never tire of animals. In my faith, there's a whole sort of uh, what's the word hierarchy in terms of the souls that are in living things. Obviously, human beings are at the top of the ladder in terms of the soul, because they have free will and can speak and so on. But, you know, although I don't own a dog, I see how they interact with people. And even, you know, you see sometimes clips of horses that have got so much empathy and so much um, love for their owners uh, it's so clear to see and put it this way for the amount that they are able to communicate despite not being able to speak and despite it's essentially not having free will in the same way that we do certainly um, I think that uh, animals are just something pretty amazing been down this way at all. Look at this. Imagine living here. So you got a farmhouse. And look at this, just unbelievable. And they've got this stag kind of thing, bronze possibly in their front yard. Pretty cool. Sun's shining brightly this morning. Oh, look at this gorgeous post box. Oh, sorry, got to take it out again. Look at that post box. Isn't that gorgeous? You can tell I'm a townie because all of these things fascinate me. Some of you guys watching this are probably laughing at me and saying, what a soppy date. But I call it as I see it. Uh-oh, okay, we've got a bit of a turn here. Thank you. Can you imagine London drivers or New York drivers if they had to drive through here every day on a single a single lane, a two-way road on a single road, single lane sort of width? Can you imagine the swearing and road rage that would be going on here? But it just doesn't happen here in the countryside. You know, even for people, you know, when they come from, let me shut my window a bit. You know, people that come from London, come here, you just kind of slow down, and it's not an issue. Flipping Nora, it is narrow here. Mm, which way to go? Let's go check this out. Actually, probably just an entrance to a farm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Ooh, rabbit, rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. 
there's a little rabbit there in the road. I don't know if that was on the screen or not. There are lots of rabbits in the countryside, obviously. Misty up ahead in the valley there. Phil, big Phil, if you're watching this, I think next time I'll have to borrow your Land Rover. Although it probably wouldn't be as easy to drive, but it would be more appropriate for the terrain, for sure. When I uh, drive around these areas with these um, hand-built walls, I mean, all walls are hand-built, I guess, but you know what I mean? These, these old um, walls which are built with that. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. He's bigger than me. I better back up. Alright, we've got a dip in the road, the divot, which I can back into. Pleasure, me old maca. Gotta let me park again now. Huh? Countryside, you can stop in the middle of the road a lot of the time without too much bother. I'm gonna have to head home soon. What was I saying? Yeah, so driving along these um, with these old traditional walls. Reminds me of the film Robin Hood with Kevin Costner. When they land ashore for the first time in years, right at the beginning of the film. He must have been shot in these parts, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I get that feeling every time I go out driving. very often get the feeling that I'm at uh, near the sea because when you go up a hill when you're driving up a steep uh, particularly steep road and just as you reach the crest you can't see beyond the crest of the hill because the crest is at such an acute angle incline um, and you know that time those times when you drive near the sea and, and you can't see any buildings and you just see a clear horizon and you know that there's the sea just beyond <coughs> you get that kind of feeling sometimes just as you reach the crest of a hill here, because it's so clear, there's no buildings obviously. So, um, oh, look at this beautiful. I haven't done, been down these roads at all. I've got no idea where I am either. So in order to get back home, I've got to turn off the video so that I can get my sat nav on. I hope I don't meet any dustbin lorries here. 
just about the width of the car, this, this road. Oh, it's a bit wider now. the other day. Public footpaths are an interesting uh, almost anomaly in the legal world because the public footpaths go across, even though they're public, they're actually on private land. And the way the countryside works is that um, when you buy a property, you buy uh, some acreage, you buy some fields or whatever, um, most of the, well a lot, maybe not most, I'm not watching where I'm going. Um, a lot of the um, a lot of the fields, a lot of the land has conditions on the freehold title, which entitles the public to walk across the land. And I, I, it is a pain in the neck sometimes for the landlords because people are inconsiderate sometimes. Maybe not so much in the countryside, but as you get nearer to a town, I think that um, it's probably more frustrating for landlords because. Um, you get tourists and hikers and sometimes, I'm not saying always, because the vast majority, probably 99.99% of them, um, are all very considerate. But sometimes you'll get the odd one or two who are not and they'll just leave their rubbish lying around. So, um, sometimes you'll find that the footpaths closed. Um, and uh, you just have to do a little bit of investigation into in terms of how to get in. We had that the other day. The, um, we saw a sign for public footpath, which we followed, and we just came across locked gates. But um, each of the gates, although they looked locked and they had chains around them, you just had to investigate a little bit and find a way to open it. And none of them were properly locked. None of them actually had padlocks on them but they looked like they were locked and you just had to unwind them or do something to open them up and um, it was no problem to get on. But I do understand, well, see a lot of them are doing that maybe because they've got herds, it's possible they've got livestock, so they have to keep them closed. But, um, so you have to be careful that if you do open the gate that you close them behind you, that's very important. But I guess it's like anything, you just have to be considerate generally, regardless if you're on your public property or not. Anyhow, I'm going to head back guys. I've really enjoyed this morning's drive. I'm coming to the end of my bowl of olive golden sliced. I'm enjoying smoking this pipe. I haven't smoked it in a while. I'm glad I brought it with me. But for now, I'm going to wish you well. Have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one.